No appointments, no registration and open until late. NHS walk-in centres are all about accessibility but they're closing fast. In England, 50 have gone in the last three years and today there's a warning that could put serious pressure on the rest of the health service. 34% of people surveyed by healthcare regulator Monitor said that without a walk-in centre they would have gone to a GP. But 22% of walk-in patients had already tried to see a GP first and couldn't get the right appointment. And 21% said if the walk-in service wasn't there they would have gone to A&E. Um, I think it's godsend, because um, if it wasn't here I would be wasting someone else's time in A&E. Uh, GP, you're probably going to wait for a couple of three days to get seen. a and is probably going to be a longer wait than you might spend here. The doctors are always falling at night time and peace of mind, because they just get poorly rapidly, don't they, and it's worrying, so... Some walk-in centres are closing because they're not popular enough, that they don't represent value for taxpayers' money. But others are closing because they're too popular. Too many so-called worried well people are coming both to their GP and then sometimes to these centres as well. Walk-in centres are now 10 years old, but the brainchild of the Blair government hasn't had much commitment from the coalition. Today the government said walk-in centres might be just one part of out-of-hours care from now on. Those with an eye on the NHS bean counters can see why. Some walk-in centres have been closed because the clinical commissioning groups don't think it's a priority. Perhaps because the patients are using them to get a second opinion or because they can be treated just as well in the GP surgery or in the A&E department. It does take a little pressure off the A&E department perhaps, but the case for that isn't very strong. A quarter of walk-in centres are in the most deprived 10% of places. There's concern from nurses today that closing the doors will hit the poorest hardest. This frontline service now part of the battle over how the NHS can be made more efficient. Dominic Reynolds, 5 News.